Uh, this is the, the start of our presentation. So big data and analytics is a very broad topic. There's a lot of ways we could go. We decided to keep our presentation fairly narrow to a certain part of what we see as an industry-wide problem that hopefully we can talk about and, and where I think ht and has a big role in being part of a solution to. Um, we certainly have expertise in other aspects of big data, so hopefully in the discussion section you can feel free not to uh, limit the discussion just to the things that, that we talk about in the presentation. Um, I don't think that we'll take the full 30 minutes, so I don't know whether or not we'll be able to do some Q&A during the 30 minutes or if we'll just move straight on to Teradata, but we'll take as much time as we need and then we can figure out what the format is uh, at that point. Um, you know, big data has the promise of, of making us all uh, you know, powerful in the, in the way this slide is set up. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we've identified is a real need for a new type of API in the industry that would allow us to share large amounts of data that are really critical for analytics applications. So the thrust of our presentation today is going to be to lay out some of the things that are happening in the industry that require um, much better use of analytics, which I think should be familiar to everyone in the room, and then to talk about some of the limitations of the existing APIs in the market and why we think that the time has come for an organization like ht and and the different people assembled here today to look at what needs to be done because the interfaces that exist today were designed in an era where the, the primary initial use case was on being able to distribute hotel inventory, to be able to expose rates and availability and then to receive reservations in an automated fashion um, and get away from faxes and extranets. And it's those same interfaces that are being used today to drive uh, analytics applications like revenue management systems, like things involved in e-commerce, digital marketing, loyalty marketing, CRM, and other use cases that are out there, whether you're using sort of a, a generic analytics application like uh, SaaS or a targeted application like Duetto, um, you end up moving data in very much the same ways or doing a custom ETL process, which I think we all know can be uh, a time-consuming process when there isn't a standardized way to share that information across organizations. Now, large companies have, in many cases, their own custom tech, tech stacks, and then that problem can be largely sort of kept within the walls of those large corporations. But as you start to bring in external systems, creating APIs among those custom in-house systems obviously becomes a challenge for those large companies as well as you work with certain best of breed external system providers. And so I'm going to start by doing sort of the industry overview in terms of what we see as being important and then I'll hand it over to Marco to talk a little bit more about revenue strategy and a specific use case and then to Jay Ash to talk about APIs. Uh, Dan Ariely, who's a notable um, writer about data, says that big data is like teenage sex. Everyone talks about it, no one really knows how to do it. Everyone thinks everyone else is doing it, so everyone claims they are doing it. Um, and I, I find that to be very apt. I, I found this photo. I assume this is him acting out that, um, <laughs> that quote. I have no idea um, why he took that picture. But um, in any case, I, I think that that is very true of the hotel industry today, that everyone's talking about it. And I don't know that a lot of us know specifically what it is or how it's different than the very large data sets that we've been dealing with historically. Um, the way I tend to define it is that big data has just become a buzzword around um, recognizing the expansion in the amount of data, a need for new architectures in a lot of cases to be able to process that data quickly, and uh, a new understanding of how you deliver that data to decision makers um, at the front line, whether that's in operations, marketing, sales, wherever it is. because. Uh, taking sort of a BI approach, I think, is what has lately been determined to be not as effective um, to actually driving decisions at the ground level. If you give someone sort of a horizontal BI platform where they can slice and dice data, it's difficult to get into the hands of a concierge or a revenue manager or a salesperson who is um, meeting with a potential client, a meeting planner, whoever it is, and they need an answer about what price they can charge while they're on the golf course or while they're on the phone traveling. Um, and it's being able to get 
very, very large data sets directly into the hands where an actionable insight or action can be recommended to that particular user. And in my mind, that's where all of these technologies and data needs to be coming together in the hotel industry to be able to create that value. Um, this is a lot of words on this slide. Basically, our, our basic thesis at Duetto is that sales operations, marketing, revenue management, all of the different demand generation and demand optimization functions. Another way to state it is all of the functions that are involved in acquiring customers and retaining customers, communicating with them. Uh, we believe that they all need to be operating from one single source of the truth. In most companies today, there is not one set of data, not one predictive analytics application that looks at demand for the hotel assets um, and provides one view of the future in terms of a forecast, in terms of setting targets, whether those be room night targets or reinvestment targets for how much you should be spending to acquire customers, as well as looking at estimating the costs of what, it's, what the organization is bearing to convert a customer. Um, very few hotel companies right now can, can drill down to a single number and say, this is what it costs us to bring in a particular booking. Um, because the way the sales and marketing and advertising bu budgets are organized and the way the different costs are allocated, a lot of times you can't boil that number down for your own direct channels as well as those external channels. And so by focusing on creating one predictive analytics platform, uh, we really think that that's the, the future over the next decade. And so smart analytics in this case reduces a lot of the conflicts between some of those teams. It allows you to create common metrics across those teams so that you can hold them accountable in similar ways. And it fosters a unified strategy. Um, analytics can also help avoid costly mistakes in many cases um, by you know, things like an alert engine where you can be monitoring different data sources and alerting users with some, when something is out of the ordinary, which gets, again, beyond kind of a traditional BI approach. And hotels must be concerned about technology disruption um, that is already underway. And so if you look at, I mean, these are names that come up at every uh, hotel conference. This is just a small subset. Uh, what we really see is the primary source of disruption in the hotel industry today is what's happening on the distribution side. So you've got companies like Booking.com, Hotel Tonight, Room 77, Expedia. Google should really be on the slide in my view, uh, eventually Apple and others. Um, they are increasingly getting between hotel companies and their customers. When you start to look at people like Google and TripAdvisors and, and players like that, it's increasingly showing that a direct booking is no longer really a direct booking anymore. Um, you no longer can really get customers for free to your own site unless you're lucky enough to have a strong enough brand where they literally just type in Marriott.com when they're looking to book a, book a hotel room. You're going to be paying a toll to someone else to get that business to your own website. Um, it's also driving shorter booking windows. That trend has stabilized a bit, although as mobile grows, you'll continue to see those booking windows shrink. Um, and then social media and reviews, you see TripAdvisor there. Facebook and Twitter are obviously players in it as well, although they haven't figured out how to monetize their businesses uh, yet and, and to get into that booking flow. The real danger here, though, is, is that there was a HAMA study recently that showed, well, actually, I'll, I'll go through the valuations. So I think we're all familiar with this as well. So the companies that are sitting in between you and your customers have higher valuations than all of the brands combined. So in the cases of somebody like a Priceline or an Expedia, um, they're getting disproportionate market share because they're growing rapidly. Um, and they've got a much lower cost ba basis to be able to manage their business. They're not employing nearly as many people. They're not at all involved in the real estate game. And so they've got disproportionate market share in terms of market cap. And I think that that trend is going to accelerate, not slow down, unless the industry can figure out uh, how to create value for consumers and drive business to those brand.com websites. There was a HAMA study that I don't think a lot of people have looked at yet. It was announced, I think, back in November um, that looked at the rise in commission payments that are being paid to these third-party intermediaries. And that includes people in the group space, as well as online travel agencies, MetaSearch, the whole sort of spectrum of different intermediaries that sit in the booking process. And those commissions are growing at more than double the rate of revenue growth right now for the last five years. Now, I think that people would have predicted that sort of 
four or five years ago when we were in a recession, the conventional wisdom would have been that as we came out of the recession, that commission growth would have slowed down or maybe even gone negative because your bargaining power and your negotiations with the OTAs should be getting stronger. You should be relying less on those channels. You should be doing more direct business, more group business, more corporate business, and relying less on that commission, commissionable business. And yet the trend, if anything, has accelerated. I don't have a, a slide here for it because I don't have their permission to present it at conferences yet, but they presented it at the Revenue Strategy Summit back in November in New York. Um, and so the data is out there, and, and I think they'll be doing more to publicize it. You don't have to draw that line out much further into the future for it to really start to, in a meaningful way, affect the profitability of hotels. Um, if the last five years repeats for the next five to seven years, hotel company profitability can be seriously degraded. And there are other industries that have been permanently disrupted. And, um, and made much less profitable because of some of these trends going on in e-commerce. It started in content businesses like music and newspapers and books and things like that, but increasingly now you're going to see that industries that are very heavily, heavily reliant upon e-commerce are going to be probably the next wave of industries to be disrupted by these, these folks, and we're certainly seeing it in the hotel industry, and, um, and I think that there's a real risk. Now, what that means from our perspective is, and there's, it's a, a different talk than the one today, to talk about what the different balance of strategies are that can help write that balance of power. But one of the absolutely critical things is going to be to take a look at the way data is shared among all of the disparate players in the hotel uh, IT stack to ensure that the people who have massive amounts of data just in their own organizations, who are our partners and our intermediaries in our market, they don't have to have nearly the same complexity as, as we do on our side. They've got very large data sets inside their own companies, and they don't have quite the same need to, to, to create open APIs um, as we do. And so for us, it requires much greater cooperation in order to achieve some of the objectives on the business side. They're going to be paramount for the next five to 10 years. Um, all customer acquisition departments need data on customer behavior. Information is stored in numerous different transactional systems, PMSs, CRSs, POSs, the whole gambit that you can think of. Um, and, and then now increasingly hotels need to start incorporating external data as well. And so I actually think at this point I've gone over the last slide I was going to present. I'll hand it over to Marco and he can start talking about some of the external data, for instance, that we're pulling into our application and that others are starting to look at and then dive a little bit deeper into revenue strategy. So actually, let me back up for a second and talk about um, what is revenue strategy and why revenue strategy and big data are actually very much interlinked. So um, in my career before Dueto, I actually used to work here on the Las Vegas Strip, and I worked for several casinos here, and that to me is the best example how revenue strategy and big data need to come together. Because you have a lot of complexity. So if we define revenue strategy, this discipline that basically touches everything from the customer acquisition to the customer retention. So all your e-commerce, marketing, revenue management, analytics, sales, whatever you can think about, where you basically you acquire a customer, you grow that customer, and then you retain that customer, you have to think about where do you get all the data for all the departments that need to touch this customer to make the right decisions. And so a casino resort is the perfect example because on one side, for example, you need to capture all the gaming activity of that person. On the other side, you need to capture all the leisure activity of that person. For example, how much are they going to spend at the spa? How much are they going to spend in retail? How much are they going to spend in restaurants? And that's a lot of data. And where does this data reside? The data is there, but resides in different transactional systems throughout the operation. They usually don't talk to each other, or if they do, it becomes very costly to have them integrate together. So the first thing you need to find is a single repository where all this data can be linked and then share among all these different departments to make decisions, which is where big data kind of starts. Um, but then also the newest trend is that besides the data that are collected at the property level, there is actually external data that affects how customers behave that now are readily available to us and they need to be looked and, uh, and integrated with everything else. And so in my career at the very beginning, how you would do that, you would basically build a bunch of fancy Excel spreadsheets that would do that. 
Excel, fantastic tool, but as we know, it has some limitations. So how do we move from the Excel spreadsheet to actually using, using big data? And so let me give you the example of the new um, customer data that are external to the hotel that we can incorporate. Big topic on reviews and social media. There's been studies from Cornell and lots of articles that I see pretty much coming out every week that talk about how reviews and social media actually can affect the purchasing behavior and even the price elasticity of specific customers. So you definitely need to look at that, but how do you get them and you incorporate them into your data set that talks to this customer? Uh, microeconomic data. Um, again, by using Excel in my early years, I've done a lot of different studies where you see that macroeconomics data, for example, the value of stocks or the consumer index or the confident index can actually drive what the customers are going to book and what they're going to buy. Whether or not, um, for example, group travel is going to be stronger than the year before, like all these things that are really going to impact um, your, your revenue strategy. Um, another big one uh, that I've never seen really captured well until, until I joined Duetto is the web shopping regrets and, den and denials. Um, everybody gets very concerned about what is the data that comes from my transactional system, like who books and when they book and how much they pay. But as we know in statistics, if you really want to build a solid model, you need to look at the people that actually didn't book. And you need to understand their behavior and why they did not book and what they were looking to purchase. Something that, for example, Amazon and other retail websites have done really well, and something where the hotel industry has been a little bit lagging again because they haven't captured the data correctly. Um, another very interesting one, especially for cities that are served by a big airport, uh, is air traffic. I can guarantee you that if you look at a city like Vegas where you actually have air traffic but you also have um, car traffic from California, whatever happens at McCarran has a big impact on the rates that are being charged on the strip and the type of customers that are actually coming in. So that's another good data set. Weather, um, especially ski resort, beach resort, I mean that's a, that's a no-brainer. Um, and then, of course, the competitor pricing data and the booking and reservation data, which is what everybody's kind of used to. But again, this is a long list, and I could be going on and on. And so again, how do we capture all this data, but also how do we store and incorporate all this data into a single repository that makes sense for all this department to deploy their revenue strategy? That's really the big challenge. And that's where the API that Jay Ash will talk about in a bit um, have to, make, have to make a lot of sense. They, they need to be bulk API, they need to be cheap API, they need to be reliable API, they need to be fast APIs. Otherwise, you're not going to move all this big data around and make sense of it in a reliable and, um, and cost-effective um, cost fashion. And so when you have all, all this data, what do you do? You basically what we are all trying to do in the hotel industry to predict demand. I know that we talk a lot about pricing and how much should we charge and all that, but really what it all really starts is the prediction of demand. If your prediction of demand is the best possible prediction you can make with the right attribute when you predict demand, the pricing kind of falls into place automatically because basically you can see all these different departments involved in revenue strategy. They can have a very good look of the future and you can then deploy all the right tactics, for example, marketing doesn't need to do a shotgun marketing approach and they don't need to basically overstimulate period where you already have demand but they can actually do very targeted offers when you need it and in e-commerce where all of us are spending a lot of money that becomes a big deal because on one side you make more money to capturing the right customer but also on the other side you're actually saving a lot of money so you're making it cost effective and you're making your ROI and your marketing dollar much better um, and also you have to um, start moving away from a lot of this department trying to execute the budget. That's a little bit of my pet peeve and I have big arguments with a lot of people in the hotel industry, especially in finance, about um, how revenue managing or, or doing your revenue strategy tactics based on the budget can be dangerous. But the, the, the reason and the way that you get away from trying to fit um, into your budget is by basically using big data and predictive analytics. If your analytics can give you this very nice view of the future and what demand is, you don't need to rely on your budget as you were doing before to basically say, this is my source of truth and this is how do I need to make my strategy to make it work. But you can actually react at the right moment to see what the customer want and what the customers are doing. So it's not that you can 
can change the behavior of the industry unless you give them the right analytics and the right data, as we talked about, that is in one single um, data repository and is very easy for everybody to digest um, and understand. And so why is now the time? I mean, you could make an argument that if for the past 10 years we should be doing this, but now, of course, the technology starts getting better. And the problem of all these different data sources that need to be aggregated is definitely accelerating, because as I just showed, there are new and new, very important data sources that are coming up, and they're cheap, and they're available for the hotels to use. Also, the IT budgets, um, especially coming out of the recession, as we know, have been under a lot of stress. Because of course, every time you have a recession, what most people try to do, they try to cut costs, and unfortunately, they see IT as a, as a cost-centric department, and so they always ask, how can we cut 5%, 10%, 15% from my IT budget? So definitely, that's another, another big thing. Um, and then, you have companies that have to deploy redundant um, resources to basically deploy these custom solutions. I can show you a couple of examples of what I built when I was on the strip, which, as I said, was Excel-based, and believe it or not, is still being used. Um, and it's functional, but it requires a lot of manpower, a lot of very skilled, very specific human capital to make that work, and it becomes very expensive. And it also becomes a little bit dangerous because guess what? There is turnover in the indus industry, it's a lot, and people move around, and you know, it's, there's dangers, there's dangers with that. Um, and then the biggest thing is that there is competition, as Patrick was saying before, between the hotels and the third parties. I'd never seen third parties as necessarily bad and evil. I mean, I actually, you know, believe it or not, I used to work at Expedia in my previous life. Uh, but third parties have something that hotels don't have. They have a lot of very good data that they can use to their advantage to basically understand what happens in an entire market. So it's kind of like an art race. If one side gets all these resources and the other side doesn't have the same resources, of course one side has, has a big advantage and of course they exploit the advantage. So now it's time to basically start giving the same advantage and level the playing field to the hotel industry by basically giving uh, the single hotels and the single companies the same access to data and maybe even better than what, for example, the OTAs or the third parties intermediaries can have. And so on that topic, I'm going to leave it to Jay Ash that is going to talk to you a little bit more about existing APIs and where should we move from there. Thanks, Marco. Um, so as mo mo most of you guys are you know, VPs of technology and head of IT departments, I'm not going to, I think you, pretty much what's on this slide is what you, know, you guys have seen in real life is that proprietary APIs require development. They require environment setup, they, they require testing, and for every new, end, new vendor you're trying to interact with or try to integrate with, it basically you have to start from scratch. And you know, dif different vendors have different capabilities, different behavior, semantics, and they lead to a lot more complex code resulting in bigger costs to maintain. So basically inter integration implementations take longer, this is going to make it, basically, well, it'll take longer. So. I'll leave it at that. And so HTNG was the solution to provide standards. So I, hey, everybody, you know, let's use these common APIs. Let's, um, let's have the same sort of messaging so that you know, when, it, when I talk to one vendor, I don't have to start from scratch again. I don't need to uh, you know, come up with you know, new sorts of messages, new sorts of fields, new sorts of um, endpoints to talk with. And so HTNG was great that way. Um, but now as we move, as well as Patrick had mentioned that the existing HTNG APIs, they're targeted towards inventory distribution. You know, they're about single transactions. They're about uh, basically how do I get this one you know, hotel room or one reservation out to everybody else or basically read that reservation. But now as we see more and more data analytics applications, we realize that we need a lot of reservations. We need to know what the whole picture was, not just today, but what it was a year ago, what it was two years ago and sort of see that whole trend. But the existing APIs don't really provide an efficient way to retrieve that. And so therefore, that's what, that's what the need for bulk APIs are. And in addition to that, I mean, we could use the existing APIs to do that. We could basically say, hey, give me the you know, one reservation for, uh, I don't know, let's say a given day, December 1st. Give me this one reservation, then give me another one, give me another one. And the existing APIs will work that way, but it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be efficient for either side. It's not going to be efficient for the PMS or the CRS that's providing that data because that's a lot of transactions that are happening individually. 
Um, it's more work on the database because there's a lot more DB round trips, and it's a lot more of network traffic. You're making a request each time. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of header information in the SOAP messages. There's a lot of uh, latency that goes back and forth, and it's just it's just slower. So it would be a lot more efficient if you could just say, hey, you know, for this even just one day for December 1st, give me all the reservations. And you can have all the data that would normally be repeated in a single reservation sort of in one place and then just have the limited data that you need for the, the very specific data for that reservation in there and not have a lot of data repeated. So just in that sense, it would be a lot more efficient to have bulk APIs. Um, in addition, it's also a lot more efficient so and a lot more easier to work with. When we want to get at you know, one year or two years of data, we need to figure out, hey, give me one reservation, two reservation for a 500 room hotel for two years. I mean, I, this thing would be running for weeks and we'd still be waiting for getting all that data. Uh, an additional step would be instead of always returning the same number of fields that, you know, some people, some providers may want, some providers may not, may not want, it'd be awesome if you could just, you know, request, hey, I only care about these fields and that would further decrease the size of your messaging and therefore lead to a little, lot more efficient messages. So uh, an example of a great you know, bulk API is of Salesforce. I know it's not, not in the hotel industry, but you know, they, they do work with a lot of data and they have solved a lot of these problems. And I think if we can somehow you know, look to them or look at at least their API, which is a, you know, a public API and see how they handle some of these situations, I think you could get quite a few you know, good ideas. Um, one of the things they provide is uh, paginated results by a query locator. So if you're asking for, hey, but I would like data for you know, two weeks, and you know, there would actually be, I don't know, a few thousand reservations, I mean, that's a very large payload to have in one message. So you could, just the same way that you would hit you know, on a Google results, next, 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 you would have your results provide, okay, here are the first 100 results, and here's an ID to the, that you can request for the next 100 results, and implement it in such a way that you know, you're, not, you're not bogging down the, the server by asking for 10,000 results, nor are you having this, this huge um, network bandwidth issue of trying to transfer that many records at once. Um, in addition to that, some of the concerns I think that people have had with you know, sort of allowing their property management systems or CRSs to accept requests for such large amounts of data is that it actually affects their day-to-day -day operations. So it's the same system that's, you know, you're checking in users, uh, checking in people with, or, you know, using for the day-to-day -day basis on the front office. And if you suddenly run a huge query for a, a large amount of data, it can get, you know, you, don't, you just don't want to be in a situation where your whole front desk locks up. So uh, Salesforce actually solved that in the sense that you, instead of us asking, hey, give me two weeks of reservation data right now, you say, hey, I would like two weeks of reservation data, you know, please give it to me within 24 hours. Or, you know, I'll, I'll ask again for the results. And basically, you could have the property management system, you know, or CRS, or whatever, you know, whatever the data, the system of data, where the data store is, schedule that job and say, okay, you know, I will process this when, you know, we have some downtime. And then you can come back, either you can come back and ask for it, you know, use, referencing that same request ID that you had initially asked for, or you can then, or you can, you know, re again, pull for it and I will return that result. So, in a sense, I mean, that's basically what we're getting. And, you know, during the panel, I can maybe give you some more specifics because I can see we're running out of time. But um, that's sort of the idea we've had with this uh, whole bulk API. And I think that now the need is there for us to have this. So, with that, I'm hoping. Oh, right. And open is better. <laughs> I think we all agree with that. That's why, you know, we have the whole HDNG is that uh, spec is that, you know, hundreds of companies trying to implement the same thing over and over with slightly different semantics is it's expensive, it's, it's expensive for everybody, it's time consuming, and it is uh, really painful to maintain. And so having it free, having it standard, motivates vendors to work with uh, hotels, it, and at the end of the day, I think you'll just get better technology out of it. Um, we've seen the trend in so many different places, so um, with that, I'll leave it. So we've used 29 minutes of our 30, um, so probably no time for questions now. Um, I mean, I th hopefully you got the gist of, of what we were talking about. And um, 
I think that the people that are represented in this room from the hotel community have a real role to play in pressuring all of the other vendors that would need to actually make a, an initiative like this successful come to the table. So, you know, the large organizations and small organizations represented are very important customers of the companies that you would think of. I don't want to name specific vendors, um, but. Uh, if we can get real interest broad based from the industry and we all speak as one with one voice then i think that there could be a very efficient process run by htng to solve this in a way that sets us up for enabling the marketing departments and operations departments and others that need this data um, for the next five to ten years so thanks for your time